Welcome to the Memories of a Moonbird podcast, exploring life one story at a time. Hello, friends, and happy almost new year. Welcome to the epilogue with Moonbird. This is my annual wrap up and last look at this year's travel and life lessons. Every year on every episode of the epilogue, I'm going to share with you a short story from an unexpected moment in my travels. I'm also going to leave you with a couple of travel tips to carry into next year. These are usually things that were popular on the podcast or things that have come up during the year, or sometimes they're just oldies but goodies. 2019 was a bittersweet year for me. It's the first year of my life I've lived without my dad. And it is also the year that, of course, I launched the Memories of a Moonbird website and podcast. Memories of a Moonbird is not just a travel website. It's not just a podcast. It is an adventure that my parents are very much a part of. Everything they've given me and taught me and encouraged me to to do and go out in the world and be, it's very much a part of every aspect of this whole adventure and this, this chronicle of my life. I really sincerely want to thank all of you for tuning in and following the website and social media. It means a great deal to me that you want to hear these stories and you want to hear these interviews. I love what I do and I'm going to continue working hard for you. And I sincerely thank you for being a part of it, especially here at the beginning. So hats off to all of you. So let's get on to the travel tips. The first of the two year end travel tips that I want to leave you with is something that my dad actually used to say whenever I would go to him to talk to him about things in my life that were more serious or I was stressed out or I was scared or anything was going on that I just wanted an ear for. I would tell him how I was feeling, and a lot of times he would say, well, you don't own the patent on that. And in case it's not clear, he was never actually trying to diminish my feelings or make me feel bad. Quite the contrary, what he was trying to say was, you're not alone. You're not alone. This thing that you're going through in life, this thing that you're feeling, these are the growing pains of the human condition. This is part of life. And on some level, it always made me feel better to know hey, I'm not alone, and neither are you. And the reason I'm telling you this as a travel tip is that you're not alone. If you're, if you're thinking to yourself, oh, I really I want to travel so badly, but I just, I just can't find the time or the money or whatever, you don't own the patent on that. You're not alone. And, and I'm telling you this because I would encourage you to talk to your friends, talk to other people that you know who have traveled, and get some advice from them, and go out there, and don't just get lost in these feelings. Don't let them run your life. Don't let fear ever prevent you from going outside your comfort zone and trying new things and going to new places and having new experiences. So just know you're not alone. You don't own the patent on that. All right, travel tip number two for the year. And you've heard this many times on the podcast so far in 2019. And it is very simply two incredibly important words. And they are, drum roll please, pack lightly. People on the podcast, and myself included, who have traveled all over the world will tell you over and over again, pack lightly. I cannot stress to you how important this is. And one of the greatest things you can do when you are packing for any trip is to lay out every single thing you think you're going to bring and you're going to want to bring, take a long, hard look at it, and try to cut it in half. You will be so happy that you're not carrying around that much stuff, that you're not burdened by all these things. And like several people on the podcast told you, and I completely second, if you forget something while you're traveling, there are plenty of stores almost everywhere you're going to go in the world. You can find the thing you're looking for. One of the greatest things about packing lightly that I also want to stress is that not filling yourself to the brim with stuff actually allows you to pick up a couple of cool things while you're traveling and bring them home for even better memories. A great example of this is on a recent trip to Europe, I was going to bring several pairs of pants and I decided to cut that down and only bring one pair of jeans, you know, one pair of Docker style pants, et cetera, et cetera. While I was traveling, I happened to see a really cool pair of pants in the store and I bought them. I brought them home. And now whenever I wear them, I remember that trip. I have such good memories and it makes me so happy. And it was really cool to be able to come home with this, this fun tchotchke that I enjoy I guess pants aren't really a tchotchke, but this piece of clothing that I really enjoy that I got in Europe and has great memories attached to it. So friends, pack lightly. All right, enough of the business. Let's get down to the fun part. And every episode of the epilogue, as I said, I'm going to share with you a short story from some unexpected moment in my travels. This year's story is called Suri, and it starts in Red Rock Canyon, Nevada. Red Rock Canyon is a really cool place. It's about 15 miles outside of Las Vegas. It's a natural conservation area. 
and rock climbers from all around the world flock there to enjoy this beautiful red rock and climb on these incredible climbs. It's an awesome place, not just for climbers, it's an awesome place for people in the world to just go visit. And if you're going to be in the Las Vegas area, I highly recommend it. We were there rock climbing with a bunch of friends. And on this particular day, we were inside the park in a place called the Black Corridor. Now, it's called the Black Corridor because it's two large rock faces that are basically smooshed together. And there's just a small corridor between them, only about 10 feet wide. The corridor itself is mostly in shade during the day, except when the sun's directly overhead. So it's a popular place with rock climbers because even on hot days, it can be relatively cool. This particular trip, we were there with a bunch of Jolene's college friends, and we were all hanging out, and I had just gotten to know several of them for the first time. One of them was this incredible climber, a Frenchman named Geoffroy. Geoffroy is the kind of guy that encourages you and just is super positive and wants nothing but the best for you. And during the day, he had shown me a couple of cool moves and taught me a bunch of really great stuff. And I felt like in a matter of hours, I became a much better climber just because of his instruction. But really, that's not what the story is about. What the story is about is the fact that Jolene was actually climbing and she was on a corner climb, which is really fun. It's one of my favorite climbs in all of Red Rock. So I'm there belaying her and she's up on the rock and suddenly I look down and I see the most beautiful mouse, and he's just looking at me. I asked Jolene if she could hold on a second, and she said yes. So she got herself comfortable on the rock where she could hold. I tightened up the rope to make sure that she wasn't going to go anywhere. And then I watched this mouse. I watched him approach my rope. I watched him consider staying on the rocks that he was familiar with and comfortable with, or maybe take a risk and explore this, this rope, this unknown territory. And that's what he did. That mouse jumped up on top of the rope and he looked at me and I looked at him again and Geoffroy noticed him. And all of a sudden Geoffroy goes, Suri, Suri. And the mouse came running up the rope right towards me, literally on this, this half inch wide piece of rope. This mouse beautifully balanced came running towards me, stopped a matter of a foot away from me, looked me right in the eyes and tilted his head. And then we stared at each other for a moment. Now, I know there's great room here for a hilarious joke and a great punchline, but there isn't one. The mouse then scurried away, jumped off the rope, and ran off somewhere, never to be seen by our eyes again. Now, Jolene, even though she was still up on the rock, was able to see this whole exchange, and she lovingly said, Hey, I think you made a new friend. I turned to Geoffroy and I said, Hey, what does that mean, souris? And he looked at me, and in his French accent, he said, It means mouse. That was a terrible French accent, by the way. Now, this is a really fun, true story that really happened. And that mouse was an amazing little creature. And we had a great moment bonding together there on that when he was balancing on that rope. But why am I telling you this story? Why am I podcasting on a travel podcast about that little Suri? Because I want to encourage all of you to be like the mouse. Well, what does that mean? It means to have the courage to jump, to take risks, to put yourself out there and step outside your comfort zone into the unknown. I can't guarantee you it's always going to be great, but I can tell you that the chances are it's going to be pretty awesome most of the time. And that is very much at the heart of what travel is all about. It is taking risks. It is jumping. It is going out there. It is stepping outside your comfort zone. It is going out into the unknown and having new experiences, meeting new people, trying new foods, just really being open to all the incredible things that this earth has to offer. Otherwise, why are we here? We are here to love and to experience and to taste foods and to make love and to have friends and to laugh and to cry and to just know everything there is to know in the human life, in the human condition. So go out there and be like the mouse. That's, that's the point of me telling you that story. As an aside or an addendum, I do want to add that my father told me all my life, and I think it's very important to remember this, that while you are out there being like the mouse, and you should, you should also remember two very important words beyond pack lightly. And those two words are stay safe. Go out there, experience the world, be like the mouse, but stay safe. And that's what I'm going to leave you with this year, my friends. Be like the mouse and stay safe. In closing, I really hope that the next decade is the greatest one we've ever known in human history. I sincerely mean that. I, I hope we all work together to heal the environment, to practice kindness, and continue to seek more understanding with each other. 
I hope we politically realign the world for the betterment of human beings all around, however you want to take that. And I also hope, I sincerely hope that you all go out there and travel and see the world and make incredible memories and enjoy awesome experiences. To that end, let me have this shameless plug that 2020 is going to be an amazing year for the Moonbird podcast. And it's not shameless. It's my own podcast, right? We've already got more than 20 episodes recorded, and I can't wait to share them with you. As a teaser, you can look forward to my conversations with a red carpet host, psychologist, space scientist, TV and film director, journalist, musician, Air Force technical sergeant, boat captain, casting director, badass pilot, some amazing actors, and my father's best friend, retired Dr. Kevin Baker, who's going to share some of his memories of this Moonbird's dad. Get ready for more pleasure for your ears than you can handle in 2020. I really appreciate you listening. And before I go, I just want to say a special thanks to everyone who was on the show this year. Thank you for being like the mouse. To my family and friends near and far, I love you. Happy New Year. Thank you for everything. Have a great day, everyone. Happy New Year to all of you. And remember, if you want more Moonbird in your life, and hey, who wouldn't? Then head on over to MemoriesOfAMoonbird.com or find me on social media at Memories of a Moonbird. Stay safe. Stay safe.